What is up, cool cats of the interwebs? It is your girl, Haley, back at it again with another episode of your favorite podcast, The Pre-Review Crew. We are looking at the games for November and forward to December, but before we get into those, let me introduce who I have with me. Today we have Brennan. Yo. And we have Mike. So, So there is one game that we didn't get to talk about in October because at the time of recording the review scores were not out for it and that is going to be Alan Wake 2. To jog your memory a bit it's a survival horror game it's single player it's developed by Remedy Entertainment and it's published by Epic Games Publishing. It came out on PC, PS5, Xbox Series S and X. It released on October 27th and it currently sits with an 89 top critic average and 92% of critics recommending. So Honestly, I was up in the air um, on how I thought this game was going to do. I was like, it could be great. It could be a complete disappointment. But apparently, it was great. Um, even so that, um, we'll talk about this later, but it's been it was nominated for Game of the Year at the Video Game Awards. So, I mean, I, I think that says something. Yeah, I mean, I've never, I still never looked into the first one, so I'm very, uh, yeah, but I've only been hearing good things, like, and even looking at these review scores, it's kind of hard to refute that this wouldn't be, uh, at least nominated for Game of the Year. I feel like Haley's got a lot to say on this, so we're, I, just just oh. take it, just take it away, just let it rip. Hey, it's your girl. Anyway, I just finished watching this played by Dan's Gaming uh, yesterday. I want to say it was phenomenal, phenomenal. In case you forgot how to pronounce that word, I just s- pronounced it for you. It's amazing. And it's the the story is so neat and honestly it's really fucking trippy at times. But like <clears throat> there were times when I got confused if I was watching a video game or if I was watching a movie. I was like, are these people like live right now? Like is this a live action part or is this the game? It was so good. So good. And there's musical parts. There's music. The music's phenomenal as well. It's it's really fucking. I thought going through this game that I was just watching a movie the whole entire time. Like it's one giant long horror movie, and even at the end, I was just like, "What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck just happened?" Because they leave you on a cliffhanger, and I told the guys earlier there's going to be a new game plus mode that I believe is going to have different point of views. Um, so it's going to add some new elements to the story, and I think they're doing one or two DLCs, which I think will be great as well, because uh, you can't leave off on anything, and, oh my god, there's so much crossover, like, they finally connect (laughs) all the worlds, like, they even, like, fucking toss, like, Max Payne in there, even though he's technically not Max Payne. And the guy from Quantum Quantum Break? Is it Quantum Break? I think it's Quantum Break. The main character from him, or from that game, is in here. But he has a different name because Dan said that they can't name the guy Max Bane because Rockstar owns the rights to that game. And they couldn't name the guy whatever his name is from Quantum Break because technically Microsoft owns that game. But they were able to rename those characters and toss them in here. Um, and you, and you pick up on their likeness and their voices. So I think that was great as well. But yeah, they, they connected like control the, the, is it the FBC? Yeah. The federal bureau of control. Um, you see them in the game. Um, 
you you don't see Jesse at all, but like you, she's in there too. You just it's a little hard to tell, but like it's it's just really fucking cool. Yeah, she's hiding behind a tree at one point. Is she? Oh, I don't know. You're saying something about how she's there, but she's not there. And I was like, oh. yeah, she's trying to, well, I don't want to give it away. <laughs> I don't want to give it away. It took me a hot second to like realize where she was, but she's there, but it's like more like in spirit. But it's it's really fucking cool, and it's really fucking trippy, and it's like it, it's just wow, and wow. Like Owen Wilson, wow. Um, wow, wow, wow. No, I think more of like a holy shit wow. Yeah, so all in Wilson. Yeah, so all in Wilson. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> but like, it's, it's also funny because they're like, oh, Alan Wake's like, I've been gone 13 years. And that's exactly the time in between when the first game was released. Oh. That's kind of cool. I like yeah. I like shit like that. That's really cool. Yeah. So like he, he like recognizes that like he's been gone forever and it's just uh, it, psh, psh. like I get looking at the scores. I I get why some people are like it, it's mid and I and I understand it. I I get it. It's uh I feel like if you followed the first one, you would understand where I'm coming from with the storytelling and just like how spooky and scary it is. It's also visually stunning. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. If you can run this on the highest settings that you have, you will definitely love taking screenshots of this game. But I think some people... If you're a newcomer to Alan Wake, it might be a little hard to jump into. They do a great way of backtracking and trying to explain things, um, but they can't explain everything. So if you're going to play this game, I definitely suggest picking up the remaster of Alan Wake and then jumping into this game because I feel... I just I feel like you won't be able to connect the dots as clearly as what some people have. Hmm. But yeah, it's I would say I would probably give this around like an eight out of ten, eight and a half. Um it's I feel like some people are giving it on the low side, especially when they say like a six, because I don't think it deserves to be that low. I think it's a pretty solid game and it's doing a lot more in like the horror genre than I think what other games are doing at the moment. And I feel like this was definitely a great new twist. Um, I didn't really see any technical issues when Dan was playing it and the gameplay honestly didn't really seem that tedious I mean it's your classic enemies are dark and you have to stay in the light and they did this really cool mechanic where and I don't know if they had this in the first game but there's different lamp posts that you can run to um, that will give you health so if you're underneath a lamp post and it's lit up It'll give you health and the an enemies can't see you. Even if you're like out in a forest. So I thought that was cool. Because you don't... Again, you have like limited health slots and uh, like limited slots in your backpack and stuff like that. So, But yeah, I thought it was uh, really fucking neat. So just one genuine question. What's like... What's holding it back from being, like, perfect in your eyes? I think at times it gets a little too confusing. Like, if you look away for a single second, you are going to miss so much. And I feel like the story sort of just... Like, it's a story within a story within a story within a story. And that starts to get confusing when you add way too many layers and 
while I think that was their whole point, because at at the end of the game, things sort of start colliding into a single layer. Um, it was still just really hard to keep track of everything. And some things seemed very tedious and unnecessary. And I was just like, why? Like, why are we here? So, also, there's, like, no fast traveling, I don't think. Which is stupid. But I get it. But yeah, it's the story can just be a little bit confusing. The gameplay is just... I mean, it's okay. I, I don't really know where... Like, Alan Wake is not... I don't see Alan Wake as a very gameplay heavy game in the sense that like, oh, the combat has to be 100% because this is a very story driven game. So, I'm oh, sorry, Mike. I was going to say that's what I'm reading in these reviews um, is the ones that are giving it a lower score are saying that the actual like gameplay is the issue. But that's the thing. This isn't a gameplay game. It is not. It is a story-driven game with horror survival-type elements of shooting and trying to stay alive. That is it. If you took the fucking, like, gameplay out of it and just put in, you know, you have to make options, I the game wouldn't change. The game would not change. It'd be the same. It's it's just it's like a cinematic masterpiece. But yeah, like you shouldn't go into this game thinking, oh shit, I'm gonna get great gameplay. Because you're playing Alan Wake for the story. Mm -hmm. You want the story within the story, within the story, within the story. Nothing more, nothing less. And if you go into here thinking, oh shit, I'm gonna get great gameplay like fucking God of War or I don't know, Call of Duty or something like that. Like, you, this is, no. You picked the wrong game. But that's just me. I always liked Alan Wake because of the weird, fucking, crazy story. Yeah. Like, this isn't control. Don't, like, we're not, we're not up against the same thing like we were in control. This is a completely... Alan Wake and Control are two completely different games while they're within the same universe. Remember that this is Alan Wake. And I think they did great. I just think the story is a little confusing. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if you're playing this for the first time and you haven't had any experience with the first one, you're definitely going to be confused. So I think that's sort of where, like, why it's missing those two points for me. Um, but in all honesty, I don't know if they could have did better. So, yeah, that, that's just my take. Bravo. Well done. Thank you, thank you. It's, uh, it's great. I love seeing Alan Wake constantly look like he's wet. Oh my phrasing <laughs> he does though in like all the pictures he just looks like he like has just stepped out of the shower the man never looked dry you could have said rain but instead you chose shower oh my wet. wet at least she didn't say moist oh Brennan likes that word. Anyway, we're going to kick it over to Thirsty Suitors. Speaking of being wet. It's a Ooh. action adventure single player game. It's developed by Outer Loop Games and published by Annapurna Interactive. It came out on PC, Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Series S and X on November 2nd. It has a 79 top critic average with only 73% of critics recommending. Um, oh, no, you go, Mike. I was about to say, uh, this did better than I thought. 
Yeah, you said exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you read my mind. You read my mind. I'm gonna hop on that boat too. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, it looked interesting. Um, when we were talking about it, you know, last month. But I don't know. I just was not expecting a lot out of it. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of mixed reviews. I'm seeing, you know, 7 out of 10s, 9 out of 10s. Um, it seems some people enjoyed it and some people were just like, yeah, this this isn't a game for me. I'm seeing the same thing. And there's a there's one review by Adrian Burroughs from the Six Axis. Sixth Axis, jeez. He says, uh, Thirsty Suitors succeeds because it delivers on story. Memorable characters, top-notch voiceover work, and standout dialogue all help elevate the average gameplay elements. So, like, I think that, you know, this is probably, again, another case where, like, story, presentation, everything is cool, but, like, the gameplay itself is just kind of whatever. So it falls into this, like, happy medium of Nines yeah. out of tens, eight out of tens, seven out of tens, like all over. In all honesty, like I, I still plan on playing this game, especially if it goes on sale. Um, I don't really, I don't know. It's just so vibrant and colorful, and looks like so much fun. And so, like, I can understand how, like, I'm looking at, um gameplay at the moment and i can understand how it can be slow and a little bit dull um but i but i think the visuals and the writing and the voice acting make up for that because it still seems like a game that i would want to play but you know um we were looking at this last month i thought the thing that would carry this would be the story and the characters um it didn't seem like a game where people were going to sit down and be like, oh, man, the gameplay was totally amazing. I was thinking people were going to be like, oh, no, the story and the characters are what really, you know, carry this game. And that's what it seems like is people are thoroughly enjoying, you know, the story and, you know, what, you know, the characters you come across, but they're all giving it, you know, off points because, like, I'm seeing it's saying, some of these guys are saying, like, the gameplay actually seems a little tedious and boring, so. Um, Abby Stone from PC Gamer says it's a heartfelt and hilarious couples therapy session disguised as a stylish RPG, a gem. I think that sums it up great. Yeah. It's funny, it's something that you sort of just play on your couch when you need a laugh. Like, it doesn't take itself too seriously. And I think I think it's great. I think the name uh, uh, is a little questionable. I'd like to know where they came up with that from. But, uh, yeah, I still think it's fun. So I play this game, I get thirsty. Dead. Dead and dying. And speaking of being thirsty, you're going to be thirsty... <laughs> In the desert, uh, in my time at Sandrock, I don't actually know if this game takes place in the desert or not, but it was a good transition. Anyway, it's a life sim single player game developed by Pathia Games and Focus Entertainment. It's uh, out on PC, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and Series X. Did it not come out on Series S too? Uh, if it came out on the Series X, it came out on the Series S. Okay, so Series X and S. It released on November 2nd as well, and has a 75 top critic average with only 62% of critics recommending. Okay, so, like, I was playing Sandrock before I hopped on this little little (laughs) podcast. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it quite a lot. It's it's very reminiscent of something like Ruin Factory, but the whole uh, post-apocalyptic rebuilding in a desert town flavor to it. 
it's just it's just kind of it's kind of nice man it's just very chill the townsfolk are cool uh you know the building aspect as opposed to farming is you know an interesting twist on the whole normal thing um my only complaint is that sometimes i feel like i have like too much uh, like, i don't know i feel it's like sometimes there's too much idle time i guess like i don't really know exactly what to do or, like how to spend my day or whatever um it's it's fine i do notice some of these really bad like really low scores on these reviews a lot of them have to do apparently with the switch port apparently the switch port is garbage it's like i think if, as long as you're not playing on the switch it should be okay yeah i'm seeing people say like this is the kind of day game when you know you're winding down your day you just want to kind of relax you know chill but this is the kind of game to, you know, pick up and have some fun with. Can I romance? Yes. Yeah. Like, right now I'm currently dating the pottery girl, Amira. She's amazing. I'm gonna ask her to marry me. You heard it here first. Brennan's getting married right on the podcast. <laughs> I was about to say, as long as I'm invited to the wedding. Oh, you're all invited. Hell yeah. Matt might be a little jealous. That's okay. She's just my 2D wife. Three, I guess she's 3D wife. I mean, she's she's 2D on my screen, but she's 3D. And her model's 3D, so like, I don't know, it doesn't matter. She's my fictional waifu. Matt can be my real waifu. I thought you were going to say she's 2D on the game, but 3D in my heart. Dead. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> That's so good. Um... I will say I have thought about picking up this game. Um, I just don't have the time right now to play something like this. But it is on my list uh, of stuff to pick up eventually. Um, yeah, because I, I like having, um, you know, life sims where I can just chill and relax and not, like, take things too seriously. Um, you know, because I play a lot of, you know, I play a lot of fighting games, play a lot of JRPGs, so there's a lot of action going on, a lot of thinking. And so, you know, a game like this, you know, I think is perfect if you're just like, you know what, I don't want to take it too seriously right now. I just want to kind of kick back, you know, pop open a beer or something and play. You know, I could see this being the perfect game for that. Heard it here first, Mike drinks beer. No, he does not. I was using that as an example. Um, pineapple means... juice. I, I'm I'm drinking pineapple juice then. Fine, you know. Mike Mike can have a couple of dad sodas every now and then. It's fine. <laughs> he can have the non-alcoholic beer when his wife says so. <laughs> Got me by the balls, man. <laughs> I can't. Sorry, speak. Jess, if you hear this. <laughs> oh, I'm sending her this one. <laughs> anyway we'll talk about Mike being whipped later and how fantastic Jess is we're gonna kick it over to Persona 5 is it Tactia Tact Tactica Tactica there we go Yeah. it's a tactical RPG it's developed by P Studio and published by Sega it came out on uh, PC, Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series S, and X. Released on November 17th, it has 78 top critic average, with only 69% of critics recommending. Yeah, I'm um, seeing reviews all over the place for this. Um, some people say it's good because, you know, it's a little more Persona 5, which they love. And then some people are saying, like, the actual tactical gameplay isn't what it should be. That sucks, dude. I mean, like, obviously it's cool, yes, that it's more persona. I'm in that camp. But also, like... Tactics. There's so many good tactics games 
that like you can't come out with a mediocre tactic game because you will just be completely shit on by everybody. Especially if it's a big uh, brand like Persona. Exactly. Even more pressure for it to be at least decent. Like I haven't picked it up yet. Um, even with these reviews, I'm planning on picking it up at some point. Probably when it goes on sale. But yeah, um, I thought it was an interesting idea to give, you know, because they did this before with um, Persona 5. Um, what was the other spinoff called? Oh, there's two spinoffs. Um, oh, Strikers? Strikers. You know, and then they had the um, dancing game, you know, and I thought those were really good spinoffs. You know, you got more of the Phantom Thieves. Uh, but this one, I'm thinking, is kind of like they're pushing it. Yes, you're getting more Persona 5, but they kind of pushed it because of the strategy aspect of it, the um, you know, the tactical aspect. And they just didn't execute that as well as they did with like Strikers or um Oh damn, what was the da- the dancing one? Was it dancing in the starlight? I don't remember. Yeah, it's uh it's unfortunate. I wanted this to be good. You know, I still have to play Strikers. Um, but I, I I feel like at some point I would want to play this. Maybe wait for like a really deep sale. Help tie this over until Persona Six when yeah, that comes honestly. out in seven years. Maybe that's why they're giving us so much Phantom Thieves is because they're like, we know these people won't get it for a while. It's just. Enjoy these spinoffs because it's gonna be a bit. I am going to pause recording really fast because I have to pee. Okay. Wow. I'm sorry. I was holding it. Record everything <laughs> that you say. That's the point. We say the weirdest shit while you got. <sighs> <laughs> she killed it. She killed it. <laughs> Can never pause. That's fucked up. Yeah, I don't have any dumb shit to say now. I know, right? Like now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about it, and that's the problem. Okay, I mean, this is this is a bit strange, but so I was I was at lunch with a friend of mine. Make it really long story short, I was at a friend. Lunch with a friend of mine, he brought another friend of his that I did not know. But I ended up spending a lot of time talking to this other guy because he was really just, he was just fucking funny. He's just, everything he said was funny. Just one of those people. Uh, we're having, we're having lunch and he's telling me about how he like, he's like apparently a whack job at work where like he'll just send emails every Wednesday, like wacky, wacky Wednesday, where he'll ask like, you know, He'll write like a question or something, you know, like like mostly like would you rather's, and so but he's like, oh, but there's so many like good ones that I haven't. That I just you know I say to my friends like, you know, or, or like really deep cut questions, like he he asked oh, at one point he asked like on average how many wipes. Do you do when you take a shit? When you when you take a shit, you're like at lunch. He's like, when you take a shit, how many wipes on average? I was like, what the fuck, man? I don't think I've ever, it's like, I don't think I've ever counted. And he's like, for me, average forty at least. Like, oh, what, the fuck, dude? What's what, going kind on? Of, what kind of shit are you taking that you gotta wipe yourself for? That's like a whole roll of toilet paper, man. <laughs> yeah, that's like a third. <laughs> but I'm just sitting there like, what? dude, is that, that's something that he's asked his friends before. Like, that's something, I was like, that's simultaneously the funniest <laughs> and weirdest thing I've ever heard anyone I straight up ask. And I was like, dude, I don't, what the fuck kind of weird ass question? He's like, I don't know, man, Wacky Wednesday. Like, that's, <laughs> how we, what the fuck? I don't think so- I've ever counted. Man, I don't think I've ever counted. <laughs> after, after that, doing your next shit, you're like, 
okay, how many times? Okay, let's see. One, two. <laughs> Dude, honestly, that's now that's gonna happen. God damn, like now it's gonna happen. Now that you said that out loud, now I'm consciously gonna do it. Oh. <laughs> I feel like mine can't be 40, dude. That probably, that, that sounds like it takes so long. That's like, that's oh. like two minutes. I don't, I actually don't know how many, I, like how fa how fast? I have so many questions. I'm, and it's like, why is that the average? You know what I mean? Like he's, the, if, if you tell me average for, I'm going to assume that you've thought about that for a while enough to have done the math to find the average like what the fuck that's when, not the when, most that's average when he's on the toilet he's got like a clipboard and everything they're taking notes and... this one was 65 <laughs> all right so i uh did 30 the other day this one was 65 so you know you average it out about 40 <laughs> Oh my god, dude. Weirdest weirdest thing. Weirdest question anyone's ever asked. No, no, I'm gonna count. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and if I'm cursed from hearing that, someone else has to be cursed too. That's the thing. You, you, now you have to continue that. You have to ruin somebody else's day by making them count how many wipes they do when they take a shit, dude. What the fuck did I walk into? So so I got like a uh, um uh, um, Instagram um, group of some of my friends where we send each other like crazy memes and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm gonna drop that question <laughs> in that group. <laughs> how many? Uh, how many wipes do you do when you take shit? <laughs> on um, average, on average. Yeah, on average, you know, like yeah. not the highest. On average, you gotta th you gotta think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have like all kinds of people like. How many do I do? Holy hell! You have to you have to watch out for the people that know though that like come back. You're actually times. going to have people counting. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh, Haley, you're just gonna have to listen to that whole bit while you were gone. I'm so happy I started doing the goofy parts at the end. I have a question. No, don't do it. You'll get sued. Who is Scream? Twenty. What? In the Spider-Man universe. Um. Uh oh. I don't remember who it is, but it's one of the um characters that's taken over by a symbiote. Okay. Um. I don't remember who it is that's taken over by a symbiote, but it is um along the lines of Venom and Carnage. Yeah. No, I just have it playing in the background, and that's who he's beating up. And I'm like, who the fuck is this? It's like, I, 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 I can't say anything outside of what just did all what Mike said. Okie dokie. Are we ready to uh, get back to the podcast? I thought we were doing the podcast. Great. Unpausing the podcast. Okie dokie, let's kick it over to the uh, month of December since we wrapped it up with Persona 5 for November. Coming up for December is Disney Dreamlight Valley. It is a life, uh, life sim and adventure game. It's developed by Gameloft Montreal and published by Gameloft. It's coming out on PC, Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Series S and X on December 5th. I do believe that December 5th is the release date for the expansion. I do believe that the game will still be in early access on December 5th. Huh. I heard the other way around. Oh, well. Um, yeah, so I've been playing this game in early access. Um, like I said, I like life sims where I could just kind of sit back and relax. Um, and I like it. Um, I'm a big fan of older Disney. I don't like the new shit that we're putting all these live action movies and all that. It's just stupid. Um, but it's cool having a village with, you know, the original Mickey Mouse, you know, Stitch, um, 
Wally. Um, who else do I have? You know, you got the Lion King characters. Like, it's really, really cool. You know, you go around, you could farm, and, you know, if you want. The game gives you a lot to do. You know, you could farm. And this is one of those life sims where there's, like, a heavy story emphasis. Um, you know, yeah, you're farming and you're doing all this life stuff. But at the same time, you're trying to, you know, solve an, an issue that's going on with the um, with the world that you're that you're doing stuff in um you might be right in all honesty it's a little weird um because their website says the expansion pass of the game launches december 5th but if you go on to the disney dreamlight valley page and then you click additions um it has all the founder editions and it says last chance to get them is in 13 days and then you scroll down and then it says choose your edition on december 1st or 5th and it's the base game, the game with the expansion, or just the expansion. So okay. it looks like the actual game's coming out of early access. Like I said, it was just a little bit confusing. So Yeah. But yeah, it, it's a fun game. Um I enjoy it. It's one of those ones where, you know, once a week I pop it open and, you know, take care of my town. But I'm enjoying it. Um I probably like Animal Crossing a little bit better, but you know, this is going to be one of those games that um, I think people are going to pay attention to if they're into this, you know, genre of games. I'm not like super into Disney, but I know that Emily has this and she absolutely loves it. And it's something that I've thought about picking up. I just haven't um mainly mainly because i'm between like what platform to get it on should i get it on switch should i get it on pc like i don't really know which one i want yeah i got it for the switch just because i like the thing i like about the switch is the portability so you know when i'm out doing stuff or when i'm just at home you know and i don't want to have to boot up games on my computer or anything you know i put some music on and played this you know on my switch yeah like i think i'm just going to wait until it's out because like yes i could play it now um it, it doesn't i don't mind waiting until mm -hmm. it all comes out yeah yeah and the past year that it has been in early access, they have added a lot of um, extra content. So when it does come out, there's going to be a lot for people to do. Oh, holy shit. The Ultimate Edition is actually cheaper than the Deluxe Edition right now on Switch. So if this interests you, I guess pick it up now while it's The cheaper. Ultimate Edition is $42. Normally it's 70 The Deluxe Edition is 50 Yeah, so... I guess I'm gonna pick this up after the podcast. <laughs> soon as soon as we hit um, stop recording, yeah, she's gonna be picking yeah. this up. I'm gonna go over and grab my Switch. Now I'm curious to know what it is on Steam. Anyway, Brennan, you got anything to say? This looks cool. Um, I was watching, like, I got sucked into, like, this... I was watching this one person do, like, a little tour of their castle. It was really... It seemed really cool. You know, it's, it's definitely, it's not, like, my thing, you know? Unless, of course, they make a Star Wars update. And I can just fucking fish with Luke Skywalker <laughs> and Darth Vader together, you know, like that would be pretty fucking cool. But I mean, but I, I don't know, it's not for me, but I still, I think it's cool. Hopefully this uh, does well. And like, it apparently, I don't know, a lot of, it's like, a, it seems to be a pretty decent community behind this too. So it's kind of cool. It just seems very, very fun. And very relaxing so yeah i think i'm a 
being that it's on sale so cheap i'm gonna get this for my switch and like mike said i do like the portability of the switch which is why like my best farm in stardew is on my switch why i can play the shit in bed with the screen exactly yeah three inches from my face like yeah so it's how i calm my down calm myself down enough to sleep as i play something relaxing on the switch I, and you know I love this it. game's one yeah this game's one of those games you know where i'm like hey i just want to kick back for you know 20 minutes i play i play this there are some days though where i wish i had a steam deck and <laughs> I think if I... This is getting off topic, but I gotta toss this in there. If I didn't have a Switch, I'd have a Steam Deck. I might get one eventually just to have both. <laughs> but but... I, can't, I can't justify buy, buying a Steam Deck because I barely play games on my PC already and utilize it to its full capabilities. So this is me forcing myself to sit here. Oh, spend the money. But uh, we're going to kick it over from something that is lighthearted and whimsical and mystical to something that is dystopian and terrifying and scary. We are going to talk about The Day Before. It is an open world MMO. It's a survival and a shooter. It's developed by Fantastic and published by Montona Fantastic. It's coming out on PC, and its release date is December 7th. Um, so I guess I should have said this at the beginning when I first introduced the month of December. The month of December sucks for video games, and it normally does. And it normally does because you don't want to release your games in December because the Game Awards comes out. And, like, all the other video games come out. Uh, award Plus, shows. Yep. Yeah. Plus, you want to release your games by Black Friday, so it's like everybody piles up in November, and then... So your game can go on sale, so people can play it beforehand, or be like, ooh, see gameplay, and then play it and pick it up when it's on sale. Whatever, you just want to get your game out before the last week of fucking November. Um, So, December was really, really hard to choose from, hence why we're going to actually talk about two life sims... And whatever the fuck this is. Um, I picked this game because it's just post-apocalyptic. Honestly, it looks like every other... It it just looks like every other post-apocalyptic game. It takes so, place on the East Coast. Sorry to cut you off there. I just, oh, saw, no, I just saw in the trailer, it says BVS instead of CVS. Real original. Anyway, I this is this is what it is. And I don't have any sort of hope for it because it doesn't really seem to be setting itself apart from the genre. So I just picked this to pick this and yeah. Is that Applebee's? I don't think that was actually Applebee's. It was probably something else, but I don't, I don't know what to say about this game. Um, so I'll, I've been watching gameplay just to see, you know, what it is, because I was kind of, you know, for some reason the title of the day before made me think of um, 28 Days Later. Um, oh, that's good, that's good. Yeah, it's a good movie. And I don't know. This has me intrigued, you know. Uh, um, oh, because the only really open world... You know, apocalyptic game I can think of that people like to play is um, was it Seven Days to Die or something like that? Um, so yes, it's another post-apocalyptic game. We get these things, you know, seventeen times a year. But for it to be an MMO, that seems interesting. Plus, there's fucking car races, man. The cushions I lost it at the car races. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was like, um, like, okay, this is fine, okay, and then I see the cars, and I'm like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Let me get that shit out, what? 
Yeah, it's just like I was watching the gameplay, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they're like racing sports cars, and I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck is going on right now?" Are you in my zombie game? Why? <laughs> like, what? I know, right? Car races. <laughs> oh, I have to say, I've been reading the comments under one of these. They released a ten-minute game trailer, and I'm reading the comments. Read off some of my favorite ones. Uh, a novel game concept. The whole game set the day before anything interesting happens. <laughs> Always wanted to know what a zombie game without zombies would look like. Fuck. This is truly, without a doubt, the game ever. <laughs> Finally, a game that really shows the world after the apocalypse. <laughs> and then reading all the comments are more entertaining than the actual gameplay trailer itself. This survival game is going to be the best racing game of all time. <laughs> <laughs> the whole walking mechanic is really innovative. <laughs> oh my god. Shit people come up with, man. <laughs> yeah, this looks like a five. This looks like a five. This looks like it wants to be Tom Clancy's The Division. But just... It's just not. It's the prequel. It's yeah. Like... <laughs> oh, this just looks like a game. This just looks like <laughs> this just looks like Apocalypse the game. Just that's it. It looks like Apocalypse Simulator. It's like here, create a character and play like you're in the apocalypse. Without actually being in the apocalypse, somebody just has to make Daisy but better. Why has no one made Daisy but better? Uh, because nobody has made Dark Souls but better. Like, what tops that? No, but like Daisy is. It's kind of ch- there's. I feel like there's a lot of room for improvement there. You know. A lot of people love and live by Daisy. Yeah, it's yeah. I don't know why, but yeah. That's I mean, I the do... one with the hardcore parkour, right? No, no that's um, um, yeah. Whoops, wrong. Daisy <laughs> is like the. It was a mod for Arma Two, and then it became its own like, its own thing. At first, it was just so good, and then it just never became good. That's what I want personally. I don't, I don't want like another fucking you know cookie cutter MMO bullshit apocalypse whatever thing this is. I just want Daisy, but better. Somebody make that happen. Come on, go. You heard it here. Somebody hop right on that. Brennan, guess what Brennan wants. Please, I will pay somebody money. He has two pennies. I have a button and a penny that I found in my pocket. He'll potentially order you Chipotle. That's kind of a punishment. I love Chipotle. He does love Chipotle. I, oh, I'll eat Chipotle. It's just, you know, Chipotle, you know, does me afterwards. Yeah, it does me afterwards, too. And there's way better food. <laughs> there's way better food. But, like... It's Chipotle. It's not a punishment. Okay, it's a punishment. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a punishment that it does me after. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Uh... So, speaking about punishment, because we're apparently all a glutton for those, we are going to talk about another life sim game. It's called Pioneers of, is it Pagonia? It looks like Pagonia. Yeah. Okay. It is a life sim city builder. It's developed and published by Envision Entertainment. It's coming out on the PC. And its release date is December 13th. This just looks like 
fantasy SimCity. I was like sitting here watching it, and I'm like, what does this remind me of? Yeah, it reminds me of a more expansive SimCity. Yeah. That's I just I watched the trailer and then I was like, okay, it's SimCity, but but it's cutesy, cartoony fantasy. It looked mm-hmm. good. On this list of all the games coming out in December, this was the only one I can the only other one. I picked another one, but apparently that wasn't coming out until later. So but this looked okay. Like this interesting. You know, it's it's um, Sim City, man. It's kinda hard to do wrong. Basically what Bernie is trying to say here that the month of December fucking sucks for video games and we basically all pick these outside of Dreamlight Valley because there wasn't much else to fucking choose from. Yep. But but that being said though, this I mean I do still I I you know I do still stand behind this. This does look kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, it looks interesting. Like depending on like the pricing, I'm thinking I don't know. I wonder if it's even. It, it was an early access, so I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, wait. I want to see how much it's going for. Oh, it's. I can't buy it. Yeah, it says. Huh. Did they That's take it point. out of early access? You can't buy it in early access anymore. Uh... That's weird. I mean, I think it's going. I think it's going out of early access in December. Like, I think that's yeah. the whole bit. Oh, okay. Uh, regardless, I guess. I mean, I was just kind of. I was wondering if you could, you know, see the price value of it. But I feel like. If, I want to guess maybe it's going to be like 30 bucks. So like, you know, you know, I, even I feel like maybe even for if there's like a sale, like 20, 25, wouldn't um, be too bad. Eurogamer has a, um, this was published on October 2nd of this year. Um, it looks like December. Um, da, 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 da. so it looks like the game isn't actually being. This is really weird. I'm so confused. Okay, um, so the game is going into early access on December thirteenth. It is not actually being released. I don't know why it says a planned release date because it says new early access features launch thirteenth of December. And then it says oh. Q1 2024 and Q2 2024. Yeah, it's going into early access. Yeah, okay. See, so at the end of this trailer, it says early access, end of 2023. And I think oh. that I mistook that as the it's the end of the early access. Yeah, when I read that in the trailer, that's what I was thinking. I, <laughs> I read it as early access ends, end of 2023. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the game is going into early access December 13th. Why it says play and release date, God only fucking knows. Um, And per this Eurogamer article, it's going to be $30 when the game goes into early access. Boom, called it. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, You know, looking at this game, I think if it was a full price $60, this would kind of really turn me off. Yeah. Um, because there's, you know, other shit I want to buy. Um, but for 30 bucks, you know, if I'm just kicking back. Don't want to play the Disney Dreamlight Valley anymore, you know. I want to, you know, build an actual, you know, city. You know, maybe I'll pick this up. Yeah. I mean, it also, I guess, this also very much depends on the state that the game releases. Yeah, in early access too. But yeah, I mean, even just for like a, hopefully it's one of those early access games where like they have a lot, you know, like they 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 
purposefully pushed it to wait until they had maybe like 70 percent of the ship they need because then like you know because then like it can only get better like and it can only get more complete over time hopefully it's just that kind of case here's sorry here's the thing that sort of pisses me off is that it's launching with goals conflicts and combat map creator and economy perfectly fine Except it says the Q1 2024 of then you'll get new objectives, you'll get a fishing hut, you'll get a productivity display, uh, subsurface mining, bigger storage, and shared co-op. Why do I not get the productivity display right off the bat? Mm -hmm. That's something that I would expect. So, like, some of those I can live without, but some of them I'm also like, why not just... Put him in the game now. Yeah. Yeah, that could be a... Uh, it could definitely be a, a pain in the ass. Unless, I mean, the only thing I could possibly think of is, like, an early unlock. As opposed to being cut completely. Is that how that works? Is it... It's the only way I could possibly justify that. Otherwise, it's gross. Hmm. Honestly, I'm not too sure, but mm -hmm. it is what it is, I guess. Um, I just, I think this Q1 thing is just, it shouldn't be a thing. It should not be a thing. Because, I mean, what, Q1 runs, runs from, like, January to, like, April or May? January to November. But... Jesus Lord, I didn't think it was that long. <laughs> Just fucking <fuck it> around. <laughs> yeah, it's like January to like March or April. Uh, looking at a fiscal quarters chart. Oh, um, Jan oh, it's January, February, March. Two is April, May, June, July, August, September, three, October, November, December is four. So I mean, in my opinion, I would wait. I was I would wait until they finally finally release the Q1 stuff and sort of see how it is at that time, and then base it off of oh, should I pick this up or not? Because while mm -hmm. thirty dollars isn't a lot for what they're giving me, I don't think it's thirty dollars worthy just yet. So I wouldn't mind waiting. And but that's the risk of you know early access yeah. is, you know, because like I uh, I picked up a couple games in early access. One of the main ones was Tim Tam. And when I first got, I got it when it first came out in early access. You know, it was kind of bare bones. You know, I got through all the content. You know, easy. But by the time it you know was officially released, I think it was officially released. Um, there was just so much extra content. Um, so if you want to take the chance, I think this is, this game does look good, you know, so pick up an early access, but if, like Kaylee said, you know, if you really want to, um, wait to see what they do with the game before it comes out, then, you know, maybe give this game a, you know, a wait, Let's see. Huh. Guys, we're at the end. Ready? That is the end of the podcast. Oh my god. Uh, that is the end of our preview and review portion of the podcast for 2023. Holy shit. I can't believe... We have made it this far. This is absolutely insane. Um, but before we wrap up, the Game of the Year announcements were dropped for the Game Awards. We're going to briefly talk about who our picks are um, based off of the six games that are chosen for Game of the Year, the Game of the Year nominees. So 
Um, first of all, we have Alan Wake 2. We have Baldur's Gate 3. Marvel okay. Spider-Man 2. Resident Evil 4. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. And The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Those are our Game of the Year picks from the Game Awards. Uh, Brennan, do you want to go first with who your pick is? Oh, it's still so difficult. I feel like, you know, it's so hard because I want to give personal bias to Zelda. I really do. And I don't know. I feel like... Yeah, I'm just going to stick with Zelda. I'm just going to go Tears of the Kingdom. For me, at least, was my game of the year. I liked Baldur's Gate a lot. Don't get me wrong. It's hard to pick between the two, but I have to go with Zelda. Um, I am between Alan Wake and Baldur's Gate. I... 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 I don't even know what the fuck it's saying right now. Like, I, I played Baldur's Gate 3. Um, I'm stuck in Act 3 right now. Um, and I'm, I'm so stuck that I've honestly just stopped playing because I'm just like, oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> but it's so good. But I like... Uh, there's something about Alan Wake that I'm just like, yes. It's so wet. Yeah, 100%. But, like, it's just, I don't know. Like, the story has me pulled in. I like the story around Baldur's Gate, don't get me wrong, but, like, the story for me is more interesting in Alan Wake than it is in Baldur's Gate. And, like, I don't know. I just really like Alan Wake, okay, guys? I'm so biased <laughs> right now. It's so hard. Baldur's Gate 3 is such a good game. It is a phenomenal game, and there's nothing else really like it that does what this does well. But at the same exact time, there's nothing out like Alan Wake in the way Alan Wake does well. And the way that they connect all the fucking stories, like... <sighs> is Remedy my new Ubisoft? <laughs> Watch out. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go Alan Wake. All right, for me, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. What the fuck is Resident Evil Four doing on here? Oh yeah, I was waiting to say that. Um, <laughs> no, you're fine. Like, like, were they sitting around like, guys? Uh, we only got five games here. We need six. J j just pick a game that came out this year. Oh, Resident Evil Four was good. Let's just do that. Um, I just think because it's a remake, and it's a remake on a really good game, that, you know, I, I really don't think it should be a nominee. Um, especially, you know, when you look at the other five, which are just, you know, they're not remakes, and they were all really creative, they were all really, um, entertaining. And I am going to go by personal bias here, uh, and I'm going to pick Zelda. Um, you know, Super Mario Brothers Wonder and Baldur's Gate Three were both really fun and enjoyable. Uh well, Baldur's Gate Three I only watched it; I didn't like actually play it myself, but it was fun to watch. Um, but Zelda, I don't know. Like, I I love the Zelda series, but this one was just kind of out there it, it was doing a lot of really cool new stuff while feel, still feeling like a zelda game here's my thing uh about the whole resident evil 4 situation we have a sequel a sequel a sequel a remake a new ip and a sequel i don't think see or not sequels. I don't think remakes should be included because I don't think that it should be considered. Like, it, it's not really a new game, in my opinion. It's already been out. I think it should be sequels, new IPs, um, 
indie games. Like, there's just other games that came out. Like, why did we not... Just looking at Open Critics 2023 Hall of Fame, why did we not pick Street Fighter VI? Why did we not pick Dave the Diver? Why did we not pick Sea of Stars? These are all games that have high critic scores. Mm -hmm. Why are we not picking something else that's new? Why are we picking a remake? I'm not trying to sit here and hate on it, because the Resident Evil 4 remake did great. It's sitting at a 92. But still, there's other shit that came out that did just as well. Like, why are we not talking about those? And it's like, why not, why not give a small game like we're sitting here looking at these. These are all AAA titles. Why not toss a random indie game up there? Uh. Hi-Fi Rush. 98. Oh, yeah. Diablo 4. Has an 88. I completely forgot that came out this year. And you and everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> Why are we just... Why? Why, 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 why? I just... Octopath Traveler 2! Fucking forgot that game existed. Um... I'm trying to think of what else came out this year. <laughs> what was that really weird game? You gotta be more specific. <laughs> oh, it had the... Yeah, like... Shit, it was like the first person game on the weird planet and you were like going through the insides of something what i don't remember oh starfield what the fuck is starfield and all this oh yeah hey. starfield Starf yeah. no oh, okay a I honestly starfield. their their player count fucking dropped like crazy i i liked it maybe it's just a personal thing for me i i liked it too i, don't, I just just compared to you know Put next to like Baldur's Gate and Zelda, I just don't. <laughs> I can't. Um, I'm trying to like go through the list. Um, Assassin's Creed Nexus, Assassin's Creed Mirage. Where's the the Bayonetta game? Oh, not yeah, to, Bayonetta three. Not to stack it with Nintendo games, but where's that? Like, there's just there's a lot of games that came out this year. And for them to sit there and be like, oh, we're just going to pick, like, the biggest titles, and there you go. It's just, it feels, it feels like a cheat. It feels like a cop-out. It very much feels like what Mike said. Oh, we need, we only have five games, we need one more. Why don't you toss an indie game up there? Like, why does it all have to be AAA titles? Good question. So, I think that is, I think it's a little disappointing that, you know, the biggest game of, the biggest award show of the year isn't highlighting some of these indie games for game of the year, or some of the smaller games for game of the year. And I don't know how they pick their game of the year titles, um, but I do think that remakes should not. Remakes and remasters should not be included. Same here. So. But yeah, that is um that is it for this episode of the pre-review crew. Oh my god, I can't believe we are basically done for the year. Another year underneath our belt. Um, we will have a video next month. Um, we'll be reviewing the games for December and we will also have, uh, the pre-review crew awards as well, where we give out our own awards, uh, for all the games that we talked about this year. So stay tuned for that. We'll probably also mention, um, what we thought of the game of the year that wins at the game awards. 
Um, and who knows, maybe our fantastic sponsor, what was it called? Gamer Juice. There we go. Maybe Gamer Juice will make an appearance. How could you ever forget Gamer Juice? <laughs> I know, how dare I? <laughs> but maybe Gamer Here's Juice will make a appearance as well with their infamous commercial break. So I hope you guys have a great day, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And we will catch you next time. Goodbye. I love you. Crickets. Cool. My electricity didn't go out. <laughs>